All right, in this lecture, I'm going to be reviewing your homework, Gas Law 4, and let's get started. I have an aerosol can with a volume of 250 milliliters, 2.3 grams of propane gas. Why are they giving me grams? First thing I look for is, is this volume, temperature, pressure changing? And I see that I just have a volume of something, a grams of something, a temperature of something. This is the static type of question. So I clearly know that this is PV equals NRT. That's how I first know, because there's nothing changing. Okay, and also there's a value that's equivalent to moles. So I'm going to rearrange this since they're looking for what's the pressure. So I'm going to rearrange this static formula we call idea gas law into P is equal to NRT over V. Okay, well, first thing, I need moles. Well, I don't have moles here except for 2.3 grams. So, well, 2.3 grams of propane, I'm going to convert to moles. We've learned how to do that. And for one mole, I put one mole up top because I want moles. I put grams in the bottom. And now here comes the question. How many grams equals one mole of propane? Well, in one mole of propane, there are three moles of carbon atoms. So three C's. And then C times the atomic mass. I can't times a C, silly Grotsky. So for every three C's, so I take the three moles of carbon and I times it by the mass of one mole of one box of carbon, which is 12 grams. I got this number from the atomic mass um, of the periodic table. And here it is in all of its glory. Okay, and let's go to carbon. The relative atomic mass is above here. I have this big C right here. So it's 12.01. I know they put the big C there, but hey. So we've got carbon is 12.01. We'll round to 12. We're not going to use the atomic number, not the number of protons, the mass, the relative mass, which is based on each other. Hydrogen has a mass of 1. So in one mole of C3H8, I have 8 hydrogens. 8 times the atomic mass is 1. We got these in the periodic table just now. 3 times 12 is 36. 8 times 1, put that in your calculator, I bet you get an 8. And then 6 plus 8 is, of course, 14. This is 44 grams per each mole. So when I solve for this, I get, well, I have to put that 44 grams here. That's my converting factor. Okay, now let's solve for it. Put in our calculator. Okay, and we get 2.3. Uh, times 1 and divide by 44 and I get um, not that answer 2.3 divide by 40 44 and I get 0.05 I'm just going to write this here I get 0 0.05227 I'll step there moles okay universal gas constant is 0 0.08206 use your units I have liters atmospheres, mole, kelvins. Temperature, well it's at 18 degrees Celsius, well we know it's 273 plus 18. We're going to convert this for Kelvin, 8 and 3 is 11, 291. Okay, we're going to divide by the volume. Volume has to be in liters for everything to cancel. We have 250 milliliters, so that becomes 0.250 liters. Now, what we're going to do here is cancel away, our hearts away here. We have moles, moles. We have liters, liters. Okay, and we have Kelvin over Kelvin. We're left with atmospheres. And, of course, we're solving for pressure, so that makes a lot of sense. So my pressure is going to be in atmospheres. Okay, so when we do this and put this in our calculator, we should get something close to five atmospheres. Now, if you round to one, if you round, you get the five atmospheres. But here's their raw number first. Okay, so what you get is four point nine nine three atmospheres. Look at our sig figs. Least significant number looks like two. So this becomes the pressure is equal to 5.0 atm. Okay, and that's five atmospheres. Now letter B, what volume would the propane occupied at STP? Wow, I can do this a number of ways. Here's my first way. Number one, if I'm going to change 
my temperature and pressure to STP, I can use VP over T equals VP over T. And I can do that because the, my moles are staying constant. I'm in an enclosed can. So real quickly, my current volume, I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to show you, is 250 liters. My current temperature is 291 Kelvin. My current pressure, we just solved, is 5 atmospheres. I plug that in. Solve for the volume at STP conditions, which we know is would be 1 atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. And you'd solve for V because the moles are constant when you use that. And you'd be just justified in doing that. You could also say, well, can I just use PV equals NRT? And you sure can because all you would do is plug in the temperature at STP, 273, the pressure at STP, 1 atmosphere. You'd be solving for your volume. The moles, guess what, are constant. And you would that, that would be justified as well doing that. Or you should know that for every mole of any gas at STP, it equals what? 22.4 liters. So you could do this. Okay, I prefer this. But e either one or either of these three would work. So I'm going to start with what volume, uh, what moles do I have? I have 0.05227 moles. And watch party people, for every one mole, let's get rid of some of this stuff in our way. For every one mole, we have 22.4 liters. We know this equivalent because of our what? Understanding of the mole concept. This would be the easiest, and they all would give you the same answer. So it does not matter. So this would be, the answer here would be 1.17 liters. That simple. Okay, again, you could have gotten the same answer through these other methods. Many ways to skin a cat here. I go navel up, but you could have used any others. Letter C. The can says the exposure temperatures above 130 may cause a can to burst. Hmm. What pressure in this can at this temperature? I can read. What is the pressure in this can at this temperature? So, well, I know that the can is staying fixed, so the number of molecules is staying fixed, so I know moles are constant. So if I know moles are constant, I could use PV over T equals PV over T. But I'm just going to make this a simple PV equals NRT problem for me. Okay, I have a temperature. That's going to go there. I know my R. I know my moles from the previous problem. Okay, we want to solve for P. We know the volume of the can because that's fixed. So volume and moles are fixed. So this is actually a, uh, if you did this this way, right? If moles are canceled and the, if the moles are constant and the volume is constant, you would just cross that out and solve P over T equals P over T. But I'm just going to use this equation. When in doubt, I go to this equation. So P is equal to moles RT over volume. Okay, well, let's plug in. The moles we've already calculated in the can to be 0.05227. So 0.05227 mole. Okay, my R is 0.08206. My temperature, that's the one I've got to worry about. Let me just write this a little neater, okay? Let's write it over here. So P is equal to 0.05, I believe it was 226, but my short-term memory goes 227. Okay, universal gas constant. It's really important to write the units, 0.08206. And there's atmospheres, liters over mole kelvins. Okay, temperature. We've got to figure out the temperature at 130. Well, you should know that um, Celsius is equal to 1 over 1.8, because we graph this, F minus 32 with the parentheses. So I'm going to take my 130 and minus 32 first. So 130 minus 32, that gives me 98. That's going to give me 98 over 1.8, because 98 times 1 over 1.8 is that. So 98 divided by 1.8. And I get my Celsius to be 54.4. So that goes over here. But I can't put a Celsius in there, can I? So what i got to do with this Celsius is I got to convert to Kelvin. Kelvin is equal to 273 plus Celsius. So I'm going to add 
273 to that, and I get 327.4. That's a Kelvin. And my volume is still the same. That didn't change. It's a fixed volume, which was uh, 0 0.250. OK, liters cancel. Kelvins cancel. Moles cancel. All right, killers. Let's do this. Uh, so we got 0 0.05227 times 0 0.08206 times 327.4 divide by 0 0.250 and I get my pressure to be 5.6 okay two sig figs and of course the answer is in atmospheres so if you think about it it was five atmospheres at 18 degrees Celsius, which is a little little lower than room temperature. And when it gets to 5.6, the can will burst. So even, okay, you're almost at the breaking point of the can at room temperature. So definitely keep that away from hair dryers. All right. Little advice, bathroom advice from the Grotsky. Okay. Calculate the number of molecules in a deep breath of air whose volume is 2.55 at a body temperature and a pressure. This is static. You got a pressure. You got a temperature. You got a volume. So they want the number of molecules, which you should know is tied to a mole. So because it's static, it's PV equals NRT. I'm going to rearrange this because I'm a big boy. And N is equal to PV over RT. Okay, let's solve for moles. What's the pressure? Pressure is 740 torr. Now, if you notice, you've been using atmospheres, but I did give you what? Another universal indicator in TOR. Nice, Grodsky. So 62.36, I'm going to use it. Now, you can convert to atmospheres and use the other one. It would not make a difference. But I'm going to use it to show you that you can. 62.36, not one I use. So 62.36, and that's going to be TOR liters mole kelvins. So everything's the same except it's in a different pressure unit. The pressure will keep in TOR, all right, 740. Save myself a conversion, but I will write the units out. All right, volume, okay, is 2.55 liters. I was nice. I gave it to you in liters already. All right, and now we have our R, which is in TOR. Temperature, of course, in Kelvin. So 37 plus 273, there's my 10. That's going to be 11, so 310 Kelvin. Okay, let's do this. Now, be careful when you multiply this out. I'm going to work this through you. 740 times 2.55. Okay, and I divide by the parentheses of 62.36 times 310. Close the parentheses, because if you don't, you're not going to get that right. This times this times the product of that. You're telling the computer to multiply that first. So in any case, I get 0.0976. And what did I just solve for, party people? I solved for, well, tours canceled, liters cancel, Kelvin cancels, and believe it, 1 over 1 over mole is actually a mole. And that would be done if we were asked for moles, but we asked for the number of molecules. So we're going to take this number, 0.0976 moles, and we're going to convert to number of molecules. For every one mole, there's how many molecules? Avogadro's number, people, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Okay, and we cancel. And we're ready to rock and roll. So 0 0.097 times 6.02, second function, EE key. Prefer that over the carrot key, but you may do any things you want to the 23rd. And what I get as an answer is 5.8. Now let's get out of this green. 5.8. 5.8. So I have two sig figs with the 740, so 5.87 times 10 to the 23, so this becomes 
8.9 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Okay, and that's what we're after. So that's how many that's how many seats that exist in a theater with this volume. Okay, and a deep breath of air. So that's how many molecules can exist under those set of conditions. Okay, so number three. Let's be crazy and go in order. A scuba divers tank contains 0.29 kilograms of O2 compressed into a volume of 2.3 liters. Calculate the gas pressure inside the tank. Well, nothing's changing, so it's PV equal nRT. All right, so I'm calculate the pressure. So pressure is equal to nRT over the volume. I need moles. They gave me kilograms of oxygen. So I take my 0.29 kilograms and I'm going to convert to grams. For every one kilogram, there's a thousand grams. And I'm going to keep going. Big boy, big girl way. We just keep going. I got grams of oxygen, right? And I want to get rid of grams to get to moles, right? And one mole of O2 is how many grams? I got to go to the periodic table. So let's go there. All right. So. Going there is not that. I thought I could quickly do that. Here we go. And the periodic table for oxygen. You find oxygen to be, whoa, 15.99. We can round to 16. Okay, get, get out of there, please. So we got uh, 16, but that's 16 per one oxygen. This is O2. So in each seat, we have two oxygens bonded. So you have to be double that. There are two O's, so two times 16 is 32 grams per every mole. Okay, so let's go find that number. 0.29 times 1,000, that's, that's me converting to grams, divide by 32, and I get 9.0625 moles. So I'll, it's kind of big, so 9.06 I'll use. Okay, my R, well, uh, we're using, didn't say what to solve it for, so we'll solve an atmosphere, so I'll use 0 0.08206, that's atmospheres liter, mole kelvin, and temperature, they said what? 9 degrees Celsius, so 273 plus 9, 93 is 12, that's 282. Kelvin over the volume 2.3 liters. Okay, make sure we're on the right path and we will cancel. Mole goes, mole goes, Kelvin goes, Kelvin goes, liter goes. We're left with atmospheres, which is a pressure unit. Yes, yes, yes. So 9.06 9 times 0 0.08206 times 282. Divide by 2.3, and what I get is a whopping 91.2, okay, atmospheres. Now, look at my sig figs, too, so it looks like 91 atm. That's a lot of atmosphere stuffed in a tank, okay? But that's my answer. A lot of moles. Mm -hmm. And that kind of makes sense, because you can stuff one mole in 22.4 liters, but we're stuffing a lot of gas in a small volume, okay, so the pressure is going to be high. Letter B, what volume would this oxygen occupy at these different conditions? Well, we can do VP over T, right, what, the volume is going to change. We can do VP over T equals VP over T because the tank is going to keep the same number of moles, but I'm more partial to PV equals NRT. Why? Because I have a new temperature, and I have a new pressure, okay, and we're going to solve for V. I think that said the volume would change in the tank, but we're talking about different volumes of air. So what we're saying is if I had a container that could change, okay, um, what would the new volume be? So in any case, solve for V. You still could do it with PV equals NR, PV over T. Solve for V. V is equal to NR T over P. Okay, and we're off and running. I guess make some room for myself. Okay, what's the moles? Well, the moles are constant. And because the moles are constant, we could use VP over T. But again, 
I'm more partial to this, so I'll use my 9.06 moles. Going to use my R. Going to make some space here. And my R, 0 0.08206 atmospheres, liters, mole kelvins. Temperature, by doing these problems, you have this number memorized. Okay, temperature is 26. New temperature, 26 plus 273 to convert to Kelvin. 9, 299 Kelvin. Dividing by the pressure, which is 0 0.95 ATM. And we can see what's going to cancel. Moles will cancel. Atmospheres cancel. Kelvin's cancel. We're left with liters. Let's go find that number. Okay, so I get 233. 0.99 liters and two sig figs are the key. So we round this to 230 liters. That's a lot of liters, but it makes a lot of sense. We have 9.06 moles. If these were STP conditions, and they almost are, take 24, 22.4 and times it by 9, and you get about this number. So that makes sense. Hi. Okay, so the next question they want the number of oxygen atoms in the tank. Well, I know I have 9.06 moles of oxygen molecules. It's important you understand the difference here because that is moles of oxygen molecules, O2. Okay, now the first step for me is convert my moles into the actual number of moles of atoms. Very different here. So I take my moles of O2, okay, and what I'm going to do is, very simply, is take the moles of O2, and I know that for every one O2, there are two oxygen atoms. So essentially, I'm doubling this, okay, because there are two atoms per mole of O2. Now, this gives me moles of atoms, and that's what they're asking for. And because they're asking for the exact number, I know I'm going to get rid of mole, which is written over here, for every one mole, there's 6.02, oops, it's a doohickey, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number of atoms. So if you cancel here with me, a mole goes bye-bye, and this gives me that many number of atoms. Again, look at an O2. In the seed of O2, there's one molecule, but there's two atoms. So we have to understand that what we're looking for here is the number of atoms. Now, there, you could do this two ways. You could take 9.06 moles of O2 and come up with the number of molecules. For every one mole, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number of molecules, right? Moles cancel. This gives you total molecules. Now, you should know that for every one molecule, I'll just write that out, there is two atoms. And if you notice, you'll come up with the same number. But you had to realize that I was asking about the total number of atoms and not molecules. So we put this in a calculator. You get 9.06. Uh, I'll do the top one. Times 2. I double the moles because it's double number of particles. And then I'm going to times it by 6.02. Second function EE times 10 to the 23. And this gives me a, a value of 1.09 times 10 to the 25. And that represents, let me just write this over here. Um, it's like three sig figs. 1.09 times 10 to the 25. And that is what? The actual number of atoms of oxygen. Different than the actual number of molecules. There's going to be twice that number. Okay, very important you understand that. Okay, last question. Number four. We have vessel A and vessel B, so let's draw them. Here's vessel A. Here's vessel B. Does anyone ever use the word vessel? It just sounds like. Is a box A, box B? All right, in any case. Vessel A contains CO gas, carbon monoxide. Vessel B is sulfur dioxide. Okay. Uh, vessel B contains sulfur. So vessel A has a gas at 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atm. That should ring 
ding ding bells here. This is STP. Okay. Vessel B, all right, is at 20 degrees Celsius, a little warmer, and at half the atmospheric pressure. Okay. The two vessels have the same volume. So the first question is which vessel contains more molecules? Okay. Well, they both fill a container because they're gases. But clearly, having more pressure for the same volume, even at a colder temperature, might give you. My guess would be even at a colder temperature, okay, this higher pressure should mean more particles. But if I don't want to guess, let's plug it in. So for A, let's keep A, B, uh, blue. We have PV equals NRT. And let's solve for N. N is going to equal to RT over PV, if you don't see it. So let's put in our universal gas constant, 0.08206. Temperature is 273 Kelvin. All right, all over my pressure, which is one atmosphere, and the volume. Okay, let's just, because they're same, let's just make it uh, 10 liters. It doesn't matter, okay? So when we solve for this, I get 0 0.08206 times 20273. And I divide by 10 times 1, which is, let's say, 10. Okay, so I get a pressure for my calculations to equal in this box, I'm sorry, my number of moles, my N is equal to 2.24. So that's how many moles I have in this box. We'll keep red for this box. This box, same thing, PV equals NRT, solve for N. N is equal to PV over um, did I, P, N is equal to PV over RT. And I see that I made a mistake over here. I had RT over PV. So if you're screaming at me, man, you, you have it right. So, um, yeah, so let's take this number, and I made a mistake, but I'm going to fix it in a neat way. I know this number is not set up right. I'm trying to go too fast here. So N is equal to RT on the bottom. So I have this mixed up. So N is equal to, okay, RT, PV over RT. So I found the inverse of that number. So I'm just going to hit the X negative 1 key for 2.24. Okay, so cool. So now I got something that makes some sense here. My moles here, sorry for the mistake, I am told. Uh, the number of moles, N, is equal to 0.446. Now back over here, I was trying to color code this and I'm all messed up now, but in any case, solve for moles, pressure is one atmosphere, my volume is 10, my R is 0.08206, I'm leaving out units for speed, and temperature is 20 plus 273, 293. All right, Kelvin. So let's go find that. So 1 times 10 is 10, and 10 divided by the product of, so parentheses, 0.08206 times 293. Close my parentheses. And I get 0.4159. OK, so wasn't as clear cut as you thought. Okay, having a higher temperature would mean that we would increase the pressure from zero a little bit. So it's not as clear cut, but clearly there is more moles of gas in this one. All right, who has more mass? Okay, well, you have more moles in here. So you may think, well, I have more particles, therefore this has to be more massive, but careful. Okay, even though we have more what? Seats or positions that gas particles can exist in, each seat only has a carbon and oxygen. This is less seats, but each seat has what? A sulfur and two oxygens. Let's look at this for a second. A carbon monoxide molecule, this is atomic mass of 12, right? 1C is 1 times 12. I'm getting this 12 from the periodic table. The atomic mass is 12. I have one oxygen. That's 1 times 16. 
add them together, you get 24 grams per mole. If you look at SO2, all right, S, 1S per C, or for per mole. So in a mole of SO2, you have one mole of S or sulfur atoms. So one times, in this case, sulfur is 32. Okay, that's 32. And you have two oxygens. So in a mole of sulfur dioxide, you also have two moles of oxygen atoms. And two times 16 is 32. And look what you have here, 64 grams per mole. Okay, so my gosh, this guy is almost two-thirds heavier, so it's not a clear cut. So because this is so much more heavier, you gotta have to look at the calculations. So I'm gonna do the calculation, okay? And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put 0.446 moles. Let's go find the grams. For every one mole, we found out there was 24 grams. That should be 28. Six but uh, 6 plus 2 is 8. I'm really have a tough time this afternoon. Right? So 28. 6 and 2 is 8. Yeah, 28 grams. And if you're screaming at me and made a mistake, you're right. Okay? So let's go find that number. So 0.446 times 28. And that gives me... 12.488 grams. Now you say, Mr. Grotsky, I have this question. Why did you pick 10 liters? I picked, you could have picked any volume. I was just using a comparative value. You could have used one liter. So my numbers are based on 10 liters. It'd work for any as long as these guys are the same. All right, so if that was something that was bothering you. Then we take the 0.4159 moles. Okay, do the same thing, get rid of moles. One mole is equal to 68 grams, so less moles, but each particle is so much more heavier. You probably could guess already, 0 0.4159 times 68. All right. And in this case, we get 28 point two eight grams so yeah vessel B okay has more mass even though it has less particles each particle was heavier and made up the difference in the less number of particles because each particle was heavier because of the two oxygens and the sulfur sulfur is 32 and another oxygen 16 so big difference there and let us see, last question, in which vessel is the average kinetic energy higher? Average kinetic energy is just temperature. Vessel B is 20 degrees Celsius. It's higher than zero. So B, hope you enjoyed that. I did. See ya.